My day job, uh, if I could call it a job, it's more of a vocation than my job, is working as a health coach. And I work, I mean, Andrew in the talk just before this one spoke about you know, what problem do we solve? And the problem with the PM that I solve is where people are in the middle of a health crisis, whether it's a mental health crisis, a physical health crisis, or an emotional health crisis. I work with them over a period of time to help them to develop the kind of mindset they need in order to overcome that problem. Um, there is no such thing as winning and losing when you're working with people who have health issues. What you're looking to do is to bring them from a better place than where they were when they first came in to speak to you. Now, I work with people who have all sorts of problems, physical problems like fibromyalgia, ME, cancer, arthritis, autoimmune conditions like that. And I also work with people who have some le level of mental health problem, whether it's pre technical clinical or post -clinical. So my role is to help them to find out who they are in the middle of the situation that they're in and to re-identify themselves as themselves rather than this person who's had this illness that has happened to them. So when I was asked to put on a talk today, and we obviously have business people and we've all that side of the how can I bring in what I do to a business uh, audience? And this idea of creating certainty in uncertain terms and in uncertain times, and it's a lovely phrase, isn't it? But the truth of it is, is that the only certainty in life is that it is uncertain. And I have personal experience of why this is so uh, true and why I have to live in a world where I know this to be um, a, one of the deepest truths that there are. When I was 19, 20 years old, I was diagnosed with an incurable autoimmune condition, which has a very fancy name. But basically, I went from being a normal 19, 20 year old to being someone who had, was told they would be in a wheelchair by the age of 30. The condition that I had affected my joints and my spine, so my mobility was affected. And I went from being, as I said, a normal 19, 20 year old to being this person who was thrown into the middle of a serious health crisis. Um, I went into the cycle of uh, traditional healthcare, I was in the hospital system, and I kind of went from thinking life was kind of going to go down a certain path to being forced into my life going down a completely different path. Um, in total, I was sick for 15 years from that age. And during that time, I lurched from one health crisis to another. Uh, on various medication, I had various serious health implications from the medication. And through time, I started to recognize that the path that I was on meant that I was reacting constantly. And in this reaction to things that were happening to me, I wasn't taking any responsibility for what was happening to me. And I was constantly looking for someone else or something else to fix it for me. The thing is, in life, <coughs> SH1T happens all the time. And whether that's in business or whether that's in your personal life, in business, we have cash flow problems. In our personal life, we could be hit with a bereavement, divorce, redundancy, illness. System problems, big one for businesses. Stick your head in the sand, put the system problem and go away. You become unemployed. Clients don't turn up. You become bankrupt. So, what do you do? Without understanding that life is uncertain, what do you do? You try and control it, don't you? You try and put all of these systems and programs in place, and you read all the books, and you listen to all the experts. The second truth is that you can't control the future. And if you can't control the outcome of anything, because life happens, then you can actually find the start to life. And you can stop doing what most of us end up doing when we're hit with a crisis, health or otherwise. Stop looking for something or someone else to blame. How many times do you hear people complaining about the bankers and the 
our politicians and our parents and our abusers and our the health system and the education system, we're always looking for someone to blame out there. And when you do that, it means it's taking your responsibility away and you're giving all your power away to somebody else. We also spend an awful lot of time worrying. Say 98% of all of the things you worry about don't happen. Because worry is generally based in the past and the future to the times when you can change anything. You can only really react and change to what's happening to you right now. Hiding in the cave. I would say in this room, maybe you've been through it yourself, where we know people who have hidden in the cave. They get to rock bottom, they hide in the cave, they don't talk to anybody, they pretend it's not happening. The other thing you do when you're in this place is that you react to things that are happening to you. And when you're reacting, it means you're not being clear. You're reacting to emotional all the time. So you're, everything is based on feelings. And when you think, I'm a great believer in intuition. But to me, there is a slight difference between intuition and how you feel. Because depending on whether you're tired, you're exhausted, you're in pain, you know, you've no money, all of these negative things impact on you and make you react in a negative way. The difference is you can step outside of yourself and you can then become more free. Not sleeping at night, sleep deprivation, I think, is actually right at the cause of an awful lot of mental health issues. <coughs> Sleep deprivation, simply that. Aside from nutritional and, and physical and all the rest, sleep deprivation. And you also live in fear. When you adopt the truth that you can't control anything, then you can move out of that and fear. And when I talk about accepting that you can't do anything about the future and you can't control the outcomes, I would add into that that you can't control the past either. And one of our other uh, talkers, was, our speakers, was talking about his, his own battle with depression and how he originally started to analyze and try to work out why he was sick. But then he realized that it was just taken back to that place. So he just doesn't do that anymore. He lives for the now and he does Who do I serve and how do I serve? How can I bring my message of hope to people who are in the place that I used to be in? And really, when you wake up thinking about life, it can happen to me, what I'm going to deal with it, whatever, whatever it brings home, then you can see the opportunities in every day. You can see the opportunities in every person that you speak to. And, and you know, Andy spoke as well, so I keep hoping, Andy, yeah, there's just so much in your talk as well, um, about making friends. So much of it is about relationships. And I don't care if you're selling widgets or whether you're selling, you know, in terms of healthcare, whatever you're selling. You have to build relationships, you have to build your network, you have to build authenticity, and you have to tell your story, and you have to be willing to share. And I know for me, I was a marketer for 17 years before I retrained, and because I had this thing of why was I sick, why were you sick, how do you have a reason? And for me, my reason was so that I could go and help people who used to be where I was. But I know whenever I was training, my, my peers would say to me, I would tell my story, and they would you tell clients that story? So I would force them to tell clients that story. And they find it very difficult to bring their own personal experiences into what they were doing. But the trouble was they were not then establishing themselves with any authenticity because they were just trying to sell the service. But they weren't trying to do it in a way that was going to add value to their customer. And recognizing the lessons, I mentioned that, recognizing the lessons before they, you actually have to learn them again. So you can feel yourself going down a certain path and you know you've been down here before and you know the last time you were down here it didn't really work out that well. You can pull yourself back earlier instead of allowing yourself to move on down that path and be in place of pain. Now Steve Chandler, I'm sure a lot of you have heard him, a very prolific uh, business writer and coach, one of my favorites. And he wrote a great book called The 17 Lines that we're telling ourselves and if anybody wants to really, really read and it's, it's really one of those Kick off the aspects um, that Jerry Fuller talked about earlier. The more challenges we face head on and the more we overcome, then the more we grow. And it's not necessarily only in personal growth, it's in our business life as well. Facing the challenges, dealing with, and you actually create a better outcome than you would have created if you pretend the problem wasn't there. So, key things to remember, and oh my God, I finished my time. This whole day has been a real revelation for me. And when I first 
was asked to get involved with the film. Okay, well, yeah, I think I might get paid at some point. But I was enthused by the idea of bringing business people together and, and getting the vibration of them and raising our positivity and all of that sort of stuff. But what has been really key for me is this idea that we are all entrepreneurial. You know, the universities are very busy teaching entrepreneurship to people, and I find that, that you know, it just doesn't make any sense to me because we are all entrepreneurial in the minute we are born. We're born to strive, we're born to achieve on this earth. So whether you are owning your own business, whether you are an upstart of your business, whether you're actually an employee, being an entrepreneur, you know, that part. All you need to do to be an entrepreneur is you need to be willing to fail, you need to have some ideas, you need to execute on those ideas, you need to be able to talk. You do all of those things, you, you'll be a success. And what pay and I fix and how do I serve? And, and this is something I can't really touch on earlier, very much so in terms of and putting in, in pitches and so on. The tools that are in the toolbox are really not the important thing. When a client comes in to me and they want to know how can I go from sleeping two hours at night to sleeping eight hours at night, they don't really need to know that I'm going to use NLP and Gnosis and and holistic therapy and nutrition, but they're really not in that. They just need to know that I can fix that pain in some way or through working with them. So a lot of the emphasis I find these on tools, it doesn't really matter. Everyone's an individual and you should blend the tools to suit the customer. <coughs> Collaboration, not competition. Big Aaron's a very small place. And you know, we if we come in from a place where we're serving, then we need to be working together. And today's been an example of that. I know the other days we have stuff being as well. And that has been something that I love really love to see the company more prevalent here in the Also to this idea of becoming your own best experiment. When I was really ill and they had told me that my liver was on the verge of going cancerous and all of this stuff because of the medication that was on. I was that shocked. I knew my illness was serious. I knew it wasn't going to kill me. But I didn't realise that the drugs that I was going to take really almost were going to kill me. So I really got to the point where I had to make a decision, had to either strive to choices, I favour, do nothing, and continue down the path I was on, which would probably have led to my liver failing. I could come off the medication, which was too scary. Or I could, well, the other alternative is to follow what you mentioned. Because if it was going to kill me anyway, what was the point of mind of that? It had affected my life that but instead I went and thought about it. I remember I just did, as a, to illustrate this, I had a, a, an appointment with my consultant. And I went right to see her. Because whenever you're in anyone's been in the national health system here, you know, because when you go into the home, I used to hate the women really so much because I was surrounded by people who were sick and I would be sitting there, well, I'm not sick. So all these people are not, I shouldn't be here. But you would win, you get 10 minutes, but possibly with a house doctor, and then with a consultant, you were really, really lucky. And I never felt I had enough time to talk because I didn't want to talk, which is probably yes, very much. So the, I paid to go private to see the consultant. I had two full hours with her. She's, she's a professor and practitioner. She is, has written several books. She's been all sorts of awards. And, but she, at the end of that two hours, said to me that, and she had books out around the table. And I mean, this really hit me as something I didn't realize that experts actually had to keep learning stuff at that time. I didn't know, I just thought they knew everything. And she went through all the books and had she, at the end of that tour she said, we do not know what is causing your illness. All we can do for you is manage your symptoms. And right at that point, I remember actually getting the instinct, the intuition in my stomach. And at that time I wasn't very self-aware, so I didn't know what it was. But that was my cue. Because if they didn't know how to fix it, why was I giving all my power over to this system that was clearly making me sicker? So it meant that I could take my own responsibility back, to accept where I was, and to move forward from that place. And that's how I ended up um, going into complete remission. Never stop learning, ever. I'm a real believer in audiobooks. I have hundreds of them. Um, I always used to write about uh, audio books as if reading was not having to sit down. I mean, it's a woman's dream. You know, particularly a woman who's got children. You know, when you sit down and read, you can't. So these e things are in my ears constantly. And I'm listening to these books and I'm learning all of this information. I'm doing this probably for about 10 years, constantly listening to books. And um, that's how I learn. It works for me, it works differently for other people. 
I put them up today to do a little touch on health stuff, and I know it's a business conference. But to me, it's all about your life, and it's all about how you live your life. One of the most important things to take nothing else from what I've said here today is to learn how to deal with your stress. How you deal with your stress may well be different to how I deal with mine, but deal with it you must. Because 90% of all illnesses is created through the mismanagement of stress. And in actual fact, there's some research that says it could also be up to 95% of all illnesses. And that does not leave an awful big gap for other illnesses. Though. So you must learn how to deal with stress. Meditation was mentioned earlier. I use meditation a lot. Prayer, spirituality, that doesn't flip your boat. Don't play golf. It doesn't matter. You, look, you must release your stress. And some people release a big old numbing and they think, oh, that releases my stress. It actually doesn't. You need to stop your breathing. It needs to be slowed down in some way to give your body a, an opportunity for your subconscious mind to link in with your body, to connect up and for the two parts to work well together. Breathe, relax, sleep, eat, laugh. These are all things that, you know, as business people and as fathers and mothers and, and you know, partners and so on, we sometimes forget to breathe, to stop. And it is so important for us to do that. And creating balance in your life is, is really key. And I have a lovely slide that I meant to put it in, but I didn't. Um, about creating balance across all areas of your life. And if you can do that, then you have a chance of living well and happy. But you also have a very strong opportunity to choose yourself, to love yourself, to recognize the brilliance that is inside of you, and to know that whatever life throws at you, even though it means that life is completely uncertain and you can't control any of it, you can control how you react to it. And through controlling how you react, you can actually create the life that you deserve. There you go, that's my little bit of a question.